Guys, hello and welcome back to my channel, Being Rocky. I'm here with Chef Dev. We're gonna put on another awesome, awesome menu for you guys. But once again, guys, thank you for spending this little time. Hope everyone is having a safe and wonderful day. So Chef Dev, go ahead, what are we doing today? Rocky and I are gonna come up and do a really exciting recipe together. We both grown up eating fish cakes. So today we're gonna to make a beautiful fish cake recipe. Our little spin on this will be to add crab. Since I've been in Florida, I've been seeing crab everywhere. Crab cakes, crab fried rice, etc., etc. So today we're doing a crab salt fish cake. We have our lump meat crab that's here. We have our salted cod, which we're gonna place in some hot water and take out a little bit of that salt. I know my mom, when she makes salt fish, she likes to do like three or four rinses. It's probably one or two rinses more than I like, but I think we're gonna do one today. We also have this beautiful ingredient. This is cassava. We have cassava and we have yuca cassava, same thing, but this is already peeled and ready to go frozen. We're gonna use this. This is grown in abundance all over Guyana and it's full of minerals and nutrients, key vitamins, vitamin C, antioxidant, collagen production. There's so much goodness that comes from this root veg that we have here. Um, do you want to talk about these ingredients? Oh yeah, so once again, we got to start the show right here. We will re re pepper, we got some garlic. We're gonna chop these red bell pepper up a little bit more. We're gonna use the bottom of what we know in Guyana. What do you call this? Sai. Sai. Yeah, it's called sai. We call it scallion or green, green onions. onions, yeah. yeah. We got some dry pine leaf thyme, garlic, garlic and onion, and onion, and uh, we got the cassava. And this you says you visited um, uh, where they made the catrip out of the bitter cassava. I saw the process being done, which is yeah. a very challenging process to peel this and then break it down and then put it, grate it into the matapi and then strain out that liquid. This is a very dense vegetable, mm -hmm. right? A very dense root veg. So you only get so much liquid out of it, which is why we cherish Kazra so much. So much, yeah. And all the ingredients are here. We also have some cilantro. And the reason why we break down the red pepper more uh, is because if it's too thick, the fish cake might break apart. So anything that you add into this fish cake, you want it to be nice and fine so it stays together. We'll do our best to keep the crab meat lump because that's nice to get a nice bite of it. Right, yeah. But that's essentially the recipe. There's also like a um, something very exciting that we're doing. We obviously need a condiment, something to complement this dish. But we're gonna get to that in a bit. So you gotta hang with us to see what we do. We do, yes. First step, we're gonna break down our cassava. So I'm just gonna cut off the, uh, the root, the, the end there, and then I'm gonna cut it into pieces like this. And this is something that my mom showed me how to do. And Rock, I bet you've made a lot of cassava. You've cooked a lot of cassava. Yeah. But what we can do here is just make an incision and I can get under and you'll see that the peel comes off that easily. So I can just roll it around and look how easily this comes off. Just so you can see, I can just use my hand from here to give you a better uh, idea. Now, Rock, we both know if there's any black in the cassava, the cassava we yeah. can't use it, right? Use it. But look at this, this is what we want when we're working with cassava, pearl white. And then maybe I can cut this into another small piece just so it boils a little faster, bit. yes. Yeah. Meanwhile, you're doing that, I got my crab meat. Let's open this. I think my body is scan kind of like right? <laughs> And you guys look so handsome in the pastel colors. Thank you. Yeah, this is, uh, this is the Chef Dev hoodie, Chef Dev and Rajkumar. And oh man, I always say oh man anytime I'm eating something. Awesome. This is available through my Instagram page in the link in the bio. So you can go in and order this online. And we also have toques and more merchandise is coming as well. You got to get... The Chef yes, Rocky, uh, the being yes. Rocky hoodies. <laughs> yeah. Or shots, like you say. Shot, yeah. <laughs> nice shot. Look at it. Look at the crab meat. The Beautiful, crab lump, meat. blue swimming crab. Yes. And that's what we're going to use. And that's our little twist today on this fish cake. Seeing as I'm in Florida and crab, crab is everywhere. Yes. And I know we have a pot behind us. A couple. 
Yeah, and uh, what I'll do is, what we do is, I'll rinse this out and just steam it a little bit. The salt fish? Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, how long does that, that go down for, the salt fish? Uh, probably boil the salt fish about 10, 10, 12 minutes. And then we want to rinse out that water? Yes. And what about the cassava? That's going to go in the pot. How long will this take to, uh, it, to soften? So, I'm not... I'm not really good with cassava, so we're gonna we, we're gonna go on a whim with that. So we're gonna keep checking it once it boil. So I always tell people who know how to buy cassava, please give me that tip. <laughs> right? We about thirty to forty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so we're like, yeah, because it's very very dense, but these smaller pieces will help. Also, another thing that we want to mention is typically fish cake, egg ball stuff like that. You would often use potato. Yes, but cassava is a beautiful thing, and when I was in Diana just uh, just recently, just weeks ago, I loved the use of cassava in the fish cake, in the egg ball. It's a gummier, more sticky type of texture, but it really promotes Guyana and the wonderful produce that is available there in Guyana. Awesome. All right. So Chef Dev just peel his cassava, cut it up nice and small, quick boiling. I give it a quick rinse and into the pot it goes. Mm. Meanwhile, here we have some pepper uh, scraps that we have. So this will add some nice color and it's going to add some nice flavor into our uh, into our fish cake. You may notice I'm chopping and not looking. And I'm yes. Sure some of you are being like, what's going on? But come closer and I'll show you what's going on. Come okay. closer. Okay. So when we're holding our knife, we want to employ what's called a chef's grip. So instead of holding the knife back here or like this, it's very wobbly. So I notice you do this as well. Yeah. We do what's called a chef's grip where we choke up on the knife. So simply take your hand and go here and you pinch grip. This doesn't mean your fingers underneath the blade, but this is called a pinch grip. Now I'm just going to slide over using that side of the knife so we don't dull the knife. In your other hand, your left hand now is going to act like a claw. So it's going to come this way. My fingers are exposed here. So if I curl them in, there's nothing to slice. And if you notice the angle of the blade is going down, so nothing can get sliced. So if I'm always cutting this way, my fingers are never exposed, right? And that's... Uh, that's how we're able to chop this way. Again, I mentioned it before with respect to what we're doing here with the red pepper. If this, if you have chunks of things in the fish cake that are too bulky, let's say for whatever reason, you might wanna add uh, big chunks of onion or corn, whatever you wanna do at home. If it's too big, it might break apart. Yes. Okay, but we will do our best to keep the lump meat crab lump. Lump, yes, so you can bite into that. So the red pepper is here. We can actually add the crab into this bowl. Okay. Mr. Rock, like that. Beautiful, man. And we're gonna form these uh, in the right. crab cake shape, right? Yes. So we can get this into our bowl now. So red pepper goes in. Um, I think we can get uh, some of that garlic powder and onion powder as well, sir. Into this here. That can go. Nice. Scallions, again, we're going fine. We did another recipe, uh, the casrip shrimp, um, and you notice that for that one we did really thick. Thick, yeah. So you get that nice shoot, uh, kind of like the like a bamboo shoot, but you get the scallion shoot. So this one we're gonna go very nice and fine to make sure that it distributes really nice through our uh, our mix. So right down, good. That looks yeah. like a good amount. So that what we will call skills. <laughs> <laughs> And that's what I call practice. <laughs> Re Re repetition is the mother of all skills. One of yeah. my favorite quotes. We can add in some thyme. Or thyme. Um, I also have some uh, some raw garlic here. Okay. And Brock, do you have any idea why I have both granulated and then why I might be using this as well? No reason. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. so it's a flavor profile thing. Uh -huh. uh, the intensity and pungency and depth of flavor that you get in a granulated garlic is one flavor. But by using the raw garlic, it'll help us bind a little bit, but it's more for adding a different flavor. And when we're cooking at home, if we use two different types of garlic or more ingredients, we'll be able to achieve more flavor. So even if in a dish we're using raw garlic, yeah. Uh, sorry, even in addition, we use cooked garlic and we add some raw garlic yeah, at the yeah. end, you get two different types of flavor. 
So that's kind of the thought process that's here. So we have a lot of worry worry going in and make sure if you do this, you wash your hands. <laughs> um, you don't want to run to the bathroom after you do something like this. <laughs> you don't want to wipe your eyes. Um, you don't want to touch anybody. Uh, and then we have our garlic. So we can do that puree like I did before, but you know, this is all going to melt. This was a frozen one too, right? Mm -hmm. So we have uh, several cloves of garlic. Behind us, the selfish is yes. uh, simmering away there. So garlic now goes in. And lastly, I'm going to add in some cilantro. And Rock, I'm going to get you to season this with salt and pepper. Cilantro is going to add a really nice flavor into our crab and fish cake. Uh, and of course, color. So you can go ahead, add salt and pepper. I know you don't like as much salt as me, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but personal preference. I'll give you a little extra. Two grind extra. <laughs> <laughs> So cilantro, salt and pepper. We have a nice fine dice on this. Clean that blade, come this side, clean this side, okay? Just like that. So now we have in all our ingredients, our aromatics, our big flavor that Rock and I are making this beautiful salt fish and crab cake. So now all we're waiting for is the salt fish. And you're gonna show us how uh, you yeah. rinse that out. So and then yeah. once the cassava becomes tender, we put it, we mash the cassava, put it in, and uh, see what happens. Yay. So, here, I got the saltfish, nice and boiled. You see how it's starting to lose a part? Mm -hmm. So, we're gonna strain this. And then, what I'll do is, I'll rinse it with some cold water. So, Chef, how would you like this? Fine or just with a lot of lumps in it? I think it would be in our best interest to make it in between fine and lump. If we have lump crab meat and if we have lump saltfish, if we, these crab cakes are going to be difficult to stick together. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we also have the cassava, which will now go into the pot as well. Thank you for rinsing it. Yes. I could add it in here, but it might splash. <laughs> That's like this, yes, right? So, yeah. I'm just going to gently put it against the pot here, just like that. And we're looking at about 30 to 40 minutes until it's completely fork tender. And we can salt the water as well. Awesome. All right, so while we're waiting on the cassava, as you can see, the saltfish is nice and boiled. So you said we're gonna go to a medium, not too fine, like if we're making saltfish and bake. Yep. So yeah. Oh. And our cassava is still cooking. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is put all this together and form our uh, crab fish cake. I'm excited, I can't wait. So Dev, you, so far are you having fun with this cooking? I'm having a lot of fun, I'm learning, and it's amazing to share this experience with you and your family. Um, the more and more I spend time trying to figure out what kind of chef I wanna be and what I wanna represent, the more and more I keep going back to my roots, traditions, and cultures, which is why I just spent so much time in Guyana, which is why I uh, put so much effort and dedication into filming that documentary, which will be out on YouTube in February, 2022. Okay. So I'm very grateful. Like I get very excited by this and it's bringing me closer to home. That's awesome. Right? That, that's, that that's is cool. amazing. That's so cool. Yes. And I'm so grateful having you over by my house in our wildest dream. We never expected. <laughs> <laughs> I, guys, I have Chef Dev at my house cooking in my kitchen how 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 it's how unreal can, like like uh uh ard uh it's, denny it's denny our life in guyana he's a youtuber we all learn a lot from him but he's got one stuff that he always says how can life get better than this right now? <laughs> yeah 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 I, awesome i agree and thank you so much we also have a little bit of a surprise too we, we decided that we want to make something really nice to accompany this with and maybe we can uh, we can start showing everybody what we're going to do in the next scene here yes, yes. we will they hide your food so good that you really can't see it but once you peel it back see how much is it better look so this is what we've decided to do we've decided to make a pepper sauce that'll be our condiment using the star fruit, 
which is also known as five finger, which is also known as carambola. This one, I can see that it's bright green here and bright yellow. The more yellow, the more golden yellow it is, the more ripe it's gonna be. So I know by looking at this, if we were to use it, it'll be very tart, yeah. very sour, which works well for making a pepper sauce. I'm gonna go in and see if I can find something a little little more ripe. Right there. Which one? <laughs> wait, wait, oh, yeah, this one. Yeah, awesome. That yeah, looks good. Yeah. Now you see, as I spin this one around, it's a lot more yellow. You can see the difference between the unripe and I would say this is semi-ripe. Right, I can yeah, tell it's also firm too. Yeah. So I don't think we need much more than two, but I'm still gonna go investigate. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, um, wow. Let's, we got smaller ones yeah. too. Awesome. And chef over here, we got the big ones. Where's that? Yeah, I think we have a nice assortment. Okay. Mm -hmm. See hey. the one that fell on the ground? We're just gonna wash everything and make sure it's nice and clean. But you know, nature is telling you that it's ready to go once it falls. I remember just in Guyana picking mango and picking a lot of different fruits like sapodilla, etc. And you see the ones on the floor, those are the ones that are most ripe. Mm -hmm. You just gotta get them before the bugs get to them, right? <laughs> yes. So we're good to go. We're gonna take this inside and blend it up. Awesome. So we just went to Rocky's backyard, picked some beautiful five finger star fruit, carambola. And what I'm gonna do is make a pepper sauce with this now. We're gonna do this together. So I'm gonna slice this down into smaller pieces. And the smaller the pieces are, the better it's gonna blend, right? So what I'm gonna do is slice all these down. Uh, in the meantime, while I'm doing this, sir, uh, what I can get you to do is add in maybe some vinegar. We're gonna be blending it. I know that this is the famous blender that makes the green seasoning, etc. Cetera, et cetera. <laughs> yes. So we can do that. So how much do you need? Neutral. Yeah, we want some acidity, but also that's good, yeah. Yes. These uh, five finger that we have, are semi ripe so gonna have a nice crunch but also very tart take the lime and give it a roll to break down the cell structure on the inside of it and what i'm going to do is slice it in half if you don't have a reamer at home simply take a fork insert it in and twist and you're going to break up all of that juice in there i go right along the skin and twist and you'll get if you have a lime that's that's not very juicy when you do this you'll get every drop of lime that's in there why are we using lime and vinegar? Flavor, you know, more flavor that was gonna go in. So you can do that, sir, yes. while I chop up our five finger. And again, the more I chop this up, the better it's gonna blend. If I add these pieces in, it's gonna take a while to get going. So I'm just gonna chip this up and you can hear that snap. Rock, if you've never eaten up a five finger before, how would you describe the flavor to anybody watching? Why is this a special pepper sauce that we're making? Oh. Five finger is a uh, it's a fruit um, like multi-purpose. It, it tastes like what 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 can I say like a like a green um, American pear. The 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 green American pear it got like a flavor to that. But with five finger, we use five finger to make like fruits for the Christmas cake. We use it. You can make jam and like now we're making pepper sauce. You pickle it. So it's it's like a awesome awesome fruit. This tasted like a, a little bit like you said pear, like a, a bit of a green apple. Yes, kind of flavor, and it also has a tropical flair to it. So if you're someone who's familiar with eating mangoes or persimmon or different things like that, you kind of get some of those notes in there. Um, it feels like it grows somewhere hot. <laughs> yeah, it's one way to describe it. Uh, so we have our vinegar, we have our lime that looks good. Next, we're gonna come in with our five finger. So this all goes in. Uh, Rocky. Yes. What's the star? What's always the star ingredient? Weary, weary pepper. <laughs> weary, 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 weary pepper is here. And I've taken out all the stems and really washed my hands well. Yes. We have about a third cup or so that's in there. So we're gonna add that into the mix. No, so, I'll wipe my hands. No, we don't have to count. All I do is throw. Let it go. <laughs> and then we're gonna add in some salt. Uh, we do precise exact measurements around here, okay? So that is uh, 0.6 
eighth of a teaspoon. <laughs> <laughs> that goes in, and we're gonna mm -hmm. add in some sugar, mm -hmm. the star fruit. Mm -hmm. uh, our five finger is semi ripe. I just taste it. It's a little bit on the sour edge, which is beautiful. We have a nice, vibrant, refreshing pepper sauce going. So the sugar will add some sweetness and just offset the lime juice and the vinegar as well. So sugar uh, goes in. Now what we need to do, sir, is we're gonna add in some water to get mm -hmm. this thing going so that it blends well. But we have our salt, our sugar, we have our acids, our lime, and our vinegar, and the star fruit, star of the show, very worry. Let's get some water. And we wanna put just enough water to get it blending. So if we add water and it's not blending properly, even with some shakes, then I'm gonna add a little bit more water. Yes. So just a splash of water goes into our pepper sauce. We do have the liquid at the bottom, and uh, I would assume that five finger is like 98, 99% of water, okay? Like a mushroom, like a cucumber, like a lot of these things. So we can, we can always, I always say, you can always add, you can always throw back, but it's hard to take away, take right? Away. <laughs> so let's see uh, what kind of texture we get from this. So this goes on. So we're done blending our five finger hot sauce. Looks like it has a nice consistency to it. Um, if we wanted to thicken this up, you could mm -hmm. do different things. You could add agar agar, um, type of gelatin would work. Um, you could blitz in some cornstarch, but we're gonna keep this all natural, right? Mm -hmm. We have a nice consistency on our hot sauce. Look oh, at that. Nice. That looks beautiful. Mm -hmm. That and, and you know, this is very unique. This is not a color that we're used to because a five finger pepper sauce is not something that's uh, that, yeah. terribly common. But you know what we gotta know. You gotta see it now, all right? Mm -hmm. Cheers. Okay, cheers. Oh Bro, that's, that's amazing. <laughs> that's awesome. Acidic, mm -hmm. lots of flavor from the five finger. Nice that we used the, both the lime juice and the vinegar. Good amount of salt, very sour. And of course the star ingredient, worry, worry. We're not just making this up, a little bit of a freestyle recipe, but this is so good we gotta get every last drop. Yes. This is gonna go perfect with the fish. No, you're gonna make me go pickle tala piping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making sour now. This is. That's wicked, awesome. Cool. That is awesome. You try? You try this? With it's, my fish cake, yes. It's spicy, but oh my God. Yeah. It's, it's really, really good. A lot of All right, cool. Yes. Approximately 30 minutes later, we have our cassava, and you see how the fork goes through and it even cracked in half. So I, and you see how it comes off the fork. So I know that this is now fork tender. So what we can do, Rock, is we're gonna strain this out. Make sure these aren't hot. I know they're not hot, but make sure they're not. Don't bun up all your hands. So, <laughs> so into here, the liquid, we don't use for anything. Uh, it's very uh, starchy and gummy. If you have a use for it, please let us know in the comments. While this is happening, sir, we can get the saltfish into our powerhouse of flavor here with the weary, weary scallion, thyme, onion, garlic, all that goes together. Cilantro, salt, pepper, boom. Ooh. Oh man, this bowl is gonna be really full. Look at that, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. I think in a perfect world too, you probably want the cassava to cool down a bit. Yeah. Uh, but you know, we're, we're gonna get going over here. Actually, you know what we're gonna do? We should let this thing cool, cool down. Cool so let's not get ahead of ourselves and let's do this thing right. So when you go to make it at home, uh, you're doing it the right way. If the cassava is too hot, it's gonna be too hot for us to work our hands into it. And uh, it's gonna start cooking all these ingredients. So we want it more closer to room temperature, warm is fine. So we're gonna take a few minutes and do this thing right. All right. So now that the cassava has strained, I have a nice large bowl, wide surface area, ready for mashing with something kind of uh, slim and narrow. So the cassava, while it's warm, while it's hot, best time to mash it. Let's make sure we get all of it out. And I'm just gonna use a fork. If you have a potato masher, then you can do that. But in this case, we're gonna use this like this, and we're going to mash it up. Now, when we're peeling our cassava, you'll see that there is a little fiber that's in the middle. So you can remove this when you're peeling the cassava. You can slice it in half and remove this called the vein. Uh, otherwise, you can do it at this step if you want. 
I don't mind the texture of it. I know a lot of people don't like it, but for me, it adds texture and it's a really, it's part of the vegetable. So uh, sometimes I don't mind if a little bit's in there. It's a little bit hard to chew, but again, it's personal preference. So if you see any of those veins now, then feel free uh, to remove them. You'll see that they stick out uh, quite a bit. So when this cassava is being mashed like this, um, we have the rest of the mixture here. So how are we gonna mix this rock? We're gonna mix this with our hands or how you wanna do it? How you wanna do it? You wanna mash it up and then throw it in the air and just the wash your hands. The best and tools in the kitchen are God's gifts mm -hmm. right here. If you're fortunate enough to have hands, uh, that's what we're gonna use. So this is all being mashed together um, and it looks like it's gonna be really nice and sticky. Uh, which is going to help us bind. So once this all goes like this, we can start uh, folding in some of this cassava, and we're going to form um, like we discussed, we discussed like crab cake style, right? So yeah, we can like do like patties. the long, like patties. Yeah, okay. yeah. Like we've done like the in the past, I've done fish cake like the the cylinder style type, but for this one, we're going to go classic crab cake style because we're using crab. Um, and this is now not as hot as it was. We let this cool down. So what I'm gonna do is take this now and put it into our mixture. Again, if you wanna take the veins out, that's totally up to you. We took out some of them. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this. Remember what I said before? You can always add, it's hard to take away, right? So we're gonna start with this mix. Get your clean hands in there. And uh, let's bring this together. Again, the aromatics like the onion powder and the garlic and the wiri wiri and the cilantro and the salt and the pepper. There's so much fun stuff going on. Going on there. right here with the crab. Okay. Another, another chef tip is to use both hands. <laughs> if, if you're in a kitchen, if you're catering, if you're in a restaurant and you're doing anything like this, this yeah. you're gonna catch licks, right? <laughs> <laughs> Blows. B blows, yeah. So both hands, looks amazing already. Yeah, look Beautiful good. colors, the red, the green, I can smell all the, the two types of garlic that we have in there. Yes. And, and that's the beauty of this cassava, is that it's like a natural binder that we have in there. Now we're gonna add in, um, I think it'd be it a is. good idea to add in some egg as well. So we take our egg here, and we can crack that in. And this will also help to act like a binder and give us a little bit of flavor. Do you ever add egg in your fish cake? I just uh, base it with egg and flour and fry it. I never add so, it. So in the breading food. process, Yes. we're gonna add one in because we can. And uh, it's looking pretty good. It's awesome, it smells good. Yeah. Okay, awesome. So we'll see in a minute if we need to add back uh, any more of the cassava. Remember, it's with salt with pepper, with anything that adds a lot of flavor and intense ingredient, you always want to make sure that uh, you add a little bit of taste and go from there. Yes. Once you add back in too much, it's really hard to pull it up. Our mix is ready. It tastes amazing. It smells amazing. We didn't end up adding all the cassava. So what I'm going to do is probably take uh, around this portion in my hand. Look at the texture of this when I press down. So you can see that it's soft. We see lump crab meat as well. And what I can do is roll it around and flatten it a bit and then get a nice round shape just like this and look at this beautiful that looks delicious mm -hmm. what I can do is place this in the breadcrumb cover it with a bit of breadcrumb if you want to flour egg wash and do that whole song and dance you can but we're adding the breadcrumb and we're going to cook it on a lower temperature so we get a nice crust if you take this and put it into high heat it's going to burn and you're going to ruin our crab fish cake so look at this beautiful patty that we have our little cake, and that's one done. Baking tray lined with parchment, so we stay organized. And uh, we're gonna form all this and, and get searing and then pair it with that five finger pepper sauce. Pepper sauce that we just made. That was so awesome. Nice. All right guys, check this out. Guess who walked in? Come on in, <laughs> Special, Special guest. Special guest. Hello. Um, <laughs> another food block blogger, uh, Salma Hack. And uh, I forget what the name Alicia says you're on there. Um, on Instagram? Yes. It's just my name, Salma Hack, mm -hmm. <laughs> on Instagram. I came today to taste, um, to be a taste tester. So it's awesome to be in the kitchen with you both. Great experience. Pleasure <laughs> to have you. And you brought <laughs> some nice treats for us yes, too. Yes, I did. I actually brought um, dochi donuts, which is uh, mochi fried down into donuts. So it's a combination of, it's a, dochi, a mochi donut. <laughs> awesome. Beautiful. Yeah. 
So Salma, you want to give your information, hun? Um, your Instagram? I am on Instagram. You can find me at Salma Hack. I have a food page, a food blog on there, where I post um, mini tutorials and recipes. Please follow me along. Awesome. Thank you for being here with us. Yes. You're welcome. Glad to be here. Okay. Thank you, Priest Worry Worry. Oh, this smells lovely. Mm -hmm. This freezes very well too, by the way. Yeah. It's a freezer bag, flatten it out like a book. And it doesn't take up a lot of room and then you defrost it and, and, and you're good to go anytime you need to cook breakfast. I saw you put the egg in there too, I do the same thing. You put the mm -hmm. egg to bind it. Wow. Yeah. And then sometimes what I'll do in my breadcrumbs with like the panko or um, regular breadcrumbs is I'll add a little bit of corn flour, like cornstarch. Beautiful. Because that'll help it like to crisp. Yes, yes. Okay. okay. Awesome. See, a lot of tips. <laughs> a lot, guys, a lot of tips for cooking. <laughs> You guys are like uh, robots because machines. <laughs> 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 really fast. I mean, in catering, my catering yeah. days and restaurant days, we got to do a thousand, fifteen hundred, oh, two thousand. Wow. Wow. Sometimes you come in early in the morning and you're doing the same job till the afternoon, evening. And it's awesome you guys are all cooking at uniform too. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. He's doing a great job following yeah. his lead. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right. So we're outside in the backyard. Uh, we have this beautiful cooking area. I've watched so many of Rocky's videos out here, so it's a little bit of a surreal experience to be standing here. And I'm so happy he invited me to, to, to cook with him. So we have our canola oil in here. It has a high smoking point. Extra virgin olive oil wouldn't be a good thing to fry no, with. Yeah. So we're gonna use grapeseed oil as my favorite. High smoke point, neutral flavor, etc. Coconut, avocado are good, but flavor transfer. Uh, so we're using canola. That's enough talk about oil. Oil goes in. Rocky, we're gonna test to see how hot. Can you come a little closer? And if I put some breadcrumb in here, you'll see that it starts to sizzle, which indicates to me that this is of temperature. So I'm gonna lay down in our crab fish cakes quickly so that they all cook. Uh, yeah, exactly. So no need to crowd, but I think we have two batches now if we do seven. So move this around, give this a shake and make sure the oil coats everywhere. A tip for you at home, if we're searing right now and this is too hot, I can simply take this off the heat source, right? And let this cool down. But it looks like it's at a good temperature. When you're cooking and you're frying, you gotta look at the food and hear it and see it. It doesn't sound aggressive, it doesn't look aggressive. Um, also, if it's not even, I can simply turn the handle to even out the oil in the cooking. The cooking, yes. Now, a question that people always have is, how do you know when it's ready to flip? It's very simple. You look, okay? You can go take a peek. I can see by the breadcrumb that's here and in and around our crab fish cake that it's getting nice color. But all I gotta do is take a peek and I love using a spoon. I don't know if it's restaurant trainer or what it is, but anytime you have anything like this, I can look underneath and see that we're not quite where we want it. But we want it this way so that we get a gentle browning while heating up the crab and the fish cake. Inside of it, yes. Smell good? Smell awesome, man. And we did have a taste inside and it was awesome. Yes, we did. Mm. Did we film that? Because it's very important that if you're making a burger mix or if you're making a lot of crab cakes or sliders or whatever it is that you're doing in large batch that you taste some. I think we and forgot another, to do that. Another tip for you too, let's say you're making like a bunch of burgers. Mm -hmm. You can take a little piece and microwave it to taste for the seasoning. The worst thing, I remember back in the day catering and doing big events where you make a big batch of meat and you forget to taste it and you form all your patties and it needs to be re-seasoned, mm. right? So we make, sure we, <laughs> we make sure we taste this mix and it's right where we want it and we didn't have to do any adjustments on the seasoning. Nothing at all. Time to go over here. Uh, you wanna check if we need to flip? Okay, got yeah. a spoon here. Yeah. Let's see. See, one side's not hot, right? Yeah. So we can yeah. use our finger. We want a little bit more color. More, yes. Yep. And we're good on the oil. So we're just gonna go a little bit low and slow here. Make sure the oil kisses around. And we don't wanna rush this. And we have uh, our special guest coming back to join us for our tasting. So she's staying nearby. And you know how Guyanese are critical in their tasting, right? <laughs> we can't wait with this pepper sauce. Yes. All right the oil around to make sure that it coats everything and I think that we're ready I can see nice coloration so okay mr. Rocky is gonna flip go using the, the spoon the spoon is awesome you can get right into all those crevices oh, yeah, look, at look at that look at that yeah. perfect <laughs> color wow 
And you can right? see how it's soft, right? How it's yeah. a little bit misshapen. And, beautiful. and as you say, yeah. you just want to warm the inside of it. Correct. The fish is cooked. The crab is, is cooked. Mm -hmm. um, the cassava is cooked. So we're not looking to heat. We're not looking to cook it. We're looking to heat it through, warm it through. I don't know if this is a crazy question, but usually we would deep fry it. That's not good, right? It's too you, much oily. Uh, it's personal preference. Okay. It's totally okay. up to you. Okay. Also with something like this, you uh -huh. have to test it. I think you may have to add some flour into your mix so it doesn't break apart in the right. fryer. Um, I think for me personally, for us in this scenario, shallow frying like this. Oh, not even shallow frying, just pan searing. There's right. not enough oil to shallow fry. Oh, nice. Look at that, man. Cool. Wow. wow. Sama, come take a look at this. <laughs> Wow! Tell, tell, let me know if our guys are doing good or yeah. awesome. <laughs> you like that. Okay, people say Masta. Masta. <laughs> oh, that looks awesome, that looks and it yeah. smells great too. Mm -hmm. Another, another, another tip that we have is I can throw back a little bit more oil because that first sear on our first side has absorbed a lot of it. I'm not looking to flood the pan, but just a kiss, half teaspoon or so of oil, a few drops. And then again, we can move this around. So that side is now going to get equal color. So a lot of times in that first fry, we take up a lot of the oil. So just go, just chill back a little bit more. Good. Okay. You excited? Yes, very much. <laughs> Taste this with that pepper sauce yeah. too. That's exciting. And we made um, I made sorrel drink. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yes. Nice. Looking forward to this. Crab fish cakes are good to go. Check out this beautiful color. Uh, but of course, we want to see what the other side looks like. So you can see Ooh. golden brown on both sides. Notice that I flipped it this way, hot side up. When I remove it to the paper towel, it'll be less steaming. If I put this hot side down like this, it's going to get really steamy and wet. And I want to maintain some of that crisp. Look both sides, how golden brown, and I can feel the crisp. This goes to paper towel. The paper towel will help us remove any excess grease that might be on there. You want to take out a few? Oh, sure. Awesome. See the piece of nice. berry where it came Oh, out. yeah. I see the piece of pepper here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look at that. Beautiful, at that. man. Nice. And you feel so how good. soft it is. That's oh, yeah. what we want. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. Because everything is cooked already, eh? The salt yeah, fish. Yeah, we're looking the, yeah. to get a crust on mm -hmm. the outside. Nice. Picture perfect, man. Pitch. Oh, can't, you can't say better, man. <laughs> Chef, you, you, like I said, Guyana, they would say you're the master. <laughs> Guyana used to say you're the master. I had good teachers, yeah. for sure. I had great yeah. people around. Nice. First round is done. Rocky and I are going to sear off the next one, but you notice how we have the breadcrumbs in here, right? A pro tip is to take this and remove it. We want to remove all these breadcrumbs because if we go through another fry here, it's going to become too dark. So I'm just gonna take these breadcrumbs out and start with a relatively fresh pan. So from here, what I can do, uh, and as this is too hot, what we would do is take a pair of tongs and go and use the tongs so your hands are not in here. But me, I'm just gonna do it like this. Take out those breadcrumbs so I have a nice clean pan. These ones are gonna be the same color as those. If I kept those breadcrumbs in there, they would become too dark. I'll Great give, tip. I'll give the oil. Oh, you're saying great tip. Mm -hmm. I'll give the oil a second. You can hear it sizzling, and then we're gonna repeat the process and fry. Boom, guys. So chef, they have prepared this crab and saltfish cake. We have our special guest. Hello. <laughs> and as I said, Guyanese are critical with their food, so we brought her here. Partial, just a taste. All right. <laughs> yeah. So salmon. We're looking forward to this. Oh, what an honor. And that's Ooh. the sorrel flour. Okay, pepper sauce. Okay, go, Rocky. Oh, thank you. You're Look welcome. at that. <laughs> and as it's sitting here resting, the smell is intoxicating. Mm -hmm. You smell all that garlic and onion and weary weary. The pan sear. Mm, thank you. You're very welcome. Oh, we need some of pepper our five finger pepper sauce. Yes. We need some of that. This, I hope this gets bottles and sold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like this spoon. Yeah. Let me grab a piece of sauce. Yeah, this one right there. Because we don't want to cross contaminate as we <laughs> say in the, in the yes. world. So. <laughs> so a nice clean spoon. Yes. Madam, here you spoon go. Spoonfuls each, hello. Yes. Wow, see it's it uh, thickened up a bit. Yeah, oh this is delicious. This is, I'm going to take myself That's first. Hot, you know. I know. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I had a little taste. Wow. It, was, it was quite trying to remind me of wow. like a pickle. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think you got there, you know. No, that's <laughs> not there. <laughs> you got there. Oh, like, Salma, no, what's it going? Perfect. Yeah. This looks like, 
I, I, I always say that Guyanese food to me is like five star and I'm just waiting on the rest of the world to find out because yes. a plate like this at any restaurant, I, I guarantee you it's like, what, $20, $30 an appetizer? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of yeah. seafood in there for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so taste test time. Here we go, oh. guys. Let's break this in. Look at the inside of this. Wow. Oh wait, somebody break one. Let me see. Yeah. Wow, look you got at the inside of this. Wow. Look at that. Wow. I love that you can see like speckles of like the pepper, mm -hmm. the scallion. Oh. All right. So here we go. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. Wow. Yes. Our pepper sauce is on point. That was really good. Nice texture from the cassava. Very soft. Seasoned very well. Cripsy on the <laughs> yes. outside. Yeah. Cripsy on the and this fluffy the, inside. The five finger fluffy on the inside. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The five finger tree over here. Just brings such a nice fruitiness and sourness to this whole vibe. Mm -hmm. And I like that you can still taste and identify each of the different like fishes, the crab or salt mm -hmm. Really good. This is the best uh fish cake I've ever had. Same. Best. Really? Best I ever, ever had. If wow. you guys want to continue recipe testing, I'll always be a taster. <laughs> <laughs> that pepper sauce is like the complement to this entire. Sure. And because this thing's hot, how do we cool, how do we wash this down? Sorrel. <laughs> Cheers. Homemade. Homemade sorrel. <laughs> wow, what a treat! <laughs> and chef, mm. adding the cassava instead of the potato mm -hmm. was That's like. Right. Brought, let me say, you're, you're, you're bad, man. You're a master. <laughs> Your mind is a master. All right? Mm. So, guys, Chef, once again, give your info. Like, where they find you on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Just Instagram for me. And just Instagram for Salma. <laughs> and uh, once again, guys, thanks for all the love and the support you have shown us. If you haven't, please like and subscribe.